This video is sponsored by Grammarly. You guys, there are bits of dinosaurs on the moon. Maybe, potentially, who knows? That's it, that's my intro. Hey, I'm Amanda, you're watching Small Entertainment and welcome to another episode of I was told something that ruined my life. I went on a deep dive, found out more information and now I'm telling you about it because what is the point of having a channel where I literally have no niche, re really no concrete through line other than me sitting here and talking to you. Like what is the point of me having that if I can't tell you about the random things that I learned about that ruin my day and ruin my life. This video is gonna be covering a lot of random stuff related to dinosaurs and related to the asteroid that wiped them out and science and stuff. So if you are expecting me to sit here and be like, creation theory. I, I'm just not going to do that. So you've been warned. If you want to get mad at me in the comments section, feel free to, because all of your comments help boost me just a little bit higher in the algorithm. And I don't mind that. That's wonderful. I love the engagement. Feel free to write full length paragraphs in my comment section. And if you write a good enough hook, maybe I'll read it. You know? <laughs> so a couple of days ago, one of my friends who works as a chemist told me about this fact that she was like, Hey, I'm telling you guys because I told my coworkers and they were like, huh? Okay, I need someone to understand this or to also think about this because this ruined my day. And she told us because I do that with them all the time. She doesn't watch my videos, but like I can send her TikToks of random things and make her suffer along with me. That's what she was doing with this random piece of information that she heard. And also hearing this, I spiraled immediately. I called four people. I, I started theorizing what this could potentially mean for the rest of humanity. Like I, I turned into a spiral. But before I tell you about that, before I tell you about the reality of this situation and why this is a learning lesson, this is a life lesson. I'm gonna first thank the sponsors for this video, Grammarly. I cannot put into words how excited I was to have Grammarly reach out to sponsor me because I've been using Grammarly since God, I was in college, maybe even earlier, maybe longer than that. The amount of times the Grammarly has saved my dyslexic self from getting an even lower grade on an essay that I'm cranking out the night before it's due is innumerable, okay? I cannot even quantify the amount of times that they have saved me and made sure that my grammar and my spelling was on point. They saved me repeatedly. <laughs> Grammarly is a digital writing assistant that you can add onto your browser to help perfect your writing. There is a free version of Grammarly and a pro version of Grammarly. The free version has basic grammar and spelling corrections and the pro version is great for making your writing more efficient and making sure that your writing is compelling. Grammarly works seamlessly to integrate into your browser, whether you use Safari, Chrome, Firefox, you name it. Even though I'm no longer in school, I am still self-employed. And so I use Grammarly mostly for emails and for description boxes and even tweets from time to time because nothing is more annoying than having a tweet do successfully and you have a giant typo in it. Grammarly prevents that. Get Grammarly Premium today. Go ahead and click the link in my description box or go to grammarly.com slash swell to get 20% off Grammarly Premium today. Thank you again to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. So what my friend told me was over Snapchat, she sent me a video. She's like, I need to tell you guys this because it ruined my day and no one seems to think this is as big as a deal as it has been. So what my friend told me was she said, did you know that apparently in moon rocks that have been harvested from the moon, they have found fragments of dinosaur teeth or bones, I believe. I think she said teeth. And they don't fully know how they got there and ruined my day. I immediately spiraled. Like it was immediate. Like I was like, wait a minute. No, we can't just start talking about what you're going to wear to work tomorrow anymore. No, we need to discuss the possibility, the ramifications that there are fragments of dinosaur that were found on the moon. Are there more fragments? What does that mean? You know, I started immediately freaking out because dinosaur fragments on the moon. Okay, let's say hypothetically, we were talking about how asteroids potentially, when the asteroid knocked out the dinosaurs, whole other thing we're gonna talk about is the asteroid knocking out the dinosaurs because that totally logically didn't happen the way I thought it did. I immediately started thinking about, you know, what this could potentially mean for the bits that were found on the moon. Because like, I'm thinking, okay, there's no gravity in space. It's like a vacuum. How does preservation work? Preservation. How does preservation, words difficult apparently. How does preservation work on 
the moon because like I'm assuming that like if it okay fragment embedded in moon rock so it's been there for a while dust on the moon whatever how does fossilification happen does it happen on the moon in zero gravity like there, there's no moisture on the moon so I'm thinking like how does like compression like is it just there is it better preserved is it like mummification is that what happens like what if what if like a limb like a full limb of a dinosaur got blasted into space landed on the moon somehow made it there and then like sh like shriveled up like could they rehydrate it like is it like a mummy like a mummified like just sitting on like under moon rocks like is that a thing could could it be like that my brain spiraled I called four different people. Hi, here's this thing that ruined my day. Uh, do you think there are ghost dinosaurs on the moon? Because that's where my brain also went. I was like, hey, uh, is this like in Supernatural where like they have to like burn the bones to like get rid of a ghost or whatever. But then like sometimes you can't just burn the bones, you know, like even if the bones are here and they're not oil and they're now like, you know, being used to uh, power our cars, you know, that type of thing. If there are fragments still on the moon, does that mean there are still dinosaur ghosts like either on the moon or roaming around because there's still a bit of the dinosaur available? It, like are, are dinosaur ghosts on the moon? Is this something we, oh my God, are there demon dinosaurs? Are they on the dark side of the moon? We don't know because I don't think the US, has the US been to the dark side of the moon? I think it's just Russia. I think Russia beat us there. The phrase dark side of the moon does not refer to dark as the absence of light, but rather dark as in unknown. Until humans were able to send a spacecraft around the moon, this area had never been seen, only during the moon. Okay, but like, did they find dinosaurs on that other side of the moon? That's what I want to know. Why are you not telling me that? Oh, China roots there first, not Russia. Who told me Russia? Again, clearly I need to do my own research. Back on this random random topic. Basically what ended up happening is I was spiraling, coming up with all these different theories. What could this possibly mean? I was very invested in a movie about dinosaurs being ghosts on the moon. I was very invested, okay? Like, forget Jurassic Park. We've got <laughs> intergalactic dinosaurs. That doesn't sound as good. Star Wars, dinosaur wars. <laughs> Hollywood, hire me. <laughs> Anyway, I was like planning this out. I was all over the place. I was talking about this for too long and I was like, oh my God, I need to talk about it, make a video on this and like discuss this and like talk about the ramifications with you guys because I love learning. I love science. I love this. And it honestly, you guys are lucky that my high school science department had like one good teacher for every three bad ones, okay? Because I easily could have had a very different life experience if it weren't for the science department of my high school destroying my <laughs> love of science. Okay, that and the fact that I like can't do anything more than like basic algebra in math. Like I'm, I'm horrifically bad at math. That too definitely plays a role, but I love science, I love learning. And so I was like, okay, I need to like make a video on this. I'm gonna like research this and like have sources. It's gonna be super intense. And then I Googled it and apparently, <laughs> I should have done that first. <laughs> So here is my long-winded way of introducing this video about how misinformation spreads. <laughs> because my friend heard something or read something and then she told me and then I told other people and then I immediately called them again and I was like, hey, so I was wrong. There's not confirmed evidence of dinosaurs on the moon. There's not. Um, let me explain. I ate crow, I did it, okay? I, I, I correct my mistakes when I make them. But basically, um, it's a theory. There's probably dinosaurs on the moon is what they're saying. So here's this article from Esquire. There could be dinosaur bones on the moon, says scientists. Keyword could be. <laughs> There could be dinosaurs on the moon or dinosaur bones on the moon. Dinosaurs may have beaten humans to the moon by approximately 65 million years, or at least dinosaur bones have. Science journalist Peter Brannon wrote about the theory in his 2017 book, The End of the World, in which geophysicist Mario Robledo theorized the asteroid that wiped out the giant reptile 65 million years ago may have flung pieces of dinosaur bones into space and onto the moon. And basically that's the whole theory, like hypothetically Hypothetically, the asteroid could have potentially like basically been so giant, so impactful that it basically punched a hole in our atmosphere and created a vacuum into space. And so debris and stuff would have just been like yeeted into space and some of it could have landed on the moon. So hypothetically, some of the dinosaur bits that were destroyed could have been vacuumed out into space and landed on the moon 
in the moon rocks. Okay, are you following? Are you following? I'm believing this theory. It sounds plausible to me. The article goes on to say that according to Brennan and Robidel, Robaletto, I am so sorry. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs was so massive, the Earth's atmosphere was torn and formed a vacuum even before the asteroid hit. In his book, Brennan, Brennan, why do I keep saying it wrong? Brennan, Brennan, Brennan. What is wrong with me? In his book, Brandon shares an interview with Rob Robaletto who explains in detail, I am so sorry, what is wrong with me? In his book, Brandon shares an interview with Robo Roboletto. What is, oh my God. In his book, Brandon shares an interview with Roboletto who explains in detail what may have actually occurred 65 million years ago during the collision. The pressure of the atmosphere in front of the asteroid started excavating the crater before it even got there, said Roboletto. When the asteroid made impact, it was intact. As the asteroid collided with the Earth in the sky above it, where there should have been air, the rock had just punched a hole of outer space vacuum in the atmosphere. As the heavens rushed in to close this hole, enormous volumes of Earth were expelled into orbit and beyond, all within a second or two of impact. So there's probably little bits of dinosaurs up on the moon, asked Brandon. Yeah, probably, said Robolano. <laughs> so there are probably bits of dinosaur on the moon. I think we need to get on that. Uh, Musk, you you seem to uh, be really set on Mars, but like the moon first. I mean, I know that uh, Bezos is gonna go, but I don't want him to come back. I really don't. I don't want Musk to come back either though, logically. Okay, so um, send me to the moon because like I would like to come back eventually. I will be in charge of finding evidence of dinosaur bones on the moon. I, I think I can do it. I have had those like little uh, archeologist excavation kits before, like the little ones they sell at like Target. I've had those and I'm very good at them. Very gentle, very, uh, I think I can do it. Send me to the moon. Let's do it. Finding out that it wasn't real ruined my day again, but I told people, cause I was like, hey, yeah, <laughs> it's a theory. I told my friend, she was also devastated, but she was like, okay, this is better. But like still this like stuck with me because I'm like, okay, even as a theory, this ruins my day. Like I'm overthinking this too much, but I wasn't going to make a video on it. I really wasn't, I wasn't gonna make this video. But then, but then this YouTube video got posted and it ruined my perception of the dinosaur thing in general, the the specious side of dinosaurs. This ruined my, this video messed with my brain. Like blender, my brain. That's what this video did. Because logically I knew that an asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs. Logically I knew that. There were dinosaurs, now there's not. But I don't think I knew specifically what that meant. And I didn't think like, oh, okay, obviously something had to survive because we have animals and plants and birds and stuff that have descended from dinosaurs then. You know, like obviously something had to survive. You can't have a dissension if you just completely wipe everything out. But this video goes like minute by minute. I also thought that like the asteroid, like, okay, boom, basically an atomic bomb wipes out 99% of the planet and it's done within like hours. No, months, months of effect of the asteroid hitting earth and then the ripple effect that it caused. And I'm just picturing like as a dinosaur, picture me as a dinosaur. I like to think the dinosaurs were all colorful colors. Like you can't tell me that a dinosaur wasn't neon pink and wasn't like bisexual colors. Like you can't tell me that. So I'm a bisexual colored dinosaur. Okay, picture me that. I survived the first atomic blast. I wouldn't logically, cause I know who I am as a person, um, but let's say hypothetically, dinosaur Amanda survived. Dinosaur swell lived, okay. The swellosaur, the swellosaur, okay. Copyright, TM, mine. The Swellosaur survived. And uh, then I'm like chilling. I'm like, oh my God, like my friends are dead. Sucks, bad, awful, okay. But then more asteroids are coming down because like a ripple effect of asteroids, awful, like aftershocks of asteroids. No, okay, let's say hypothetically I survived that. Probably wouldn't. We've got uh, tsunamis, tsunamis coming through, horrible. Awful. I'm a good swimmer, but like is Swellosaur Amanda a good swimmer? Probably not. Probably not. I'm assuming I have stumpy arms because I'm like 5'2". Like I'm assuming like dinosaur form. I'm thinking like s small arms. I, I, I probably would be a good swimmer. So I probably wouldn't survive that. But even if I did survive that, we also have the whole, the heat of everything, either raising the temperature repeatedly for like a long period of time or <laughs> raising the temperature to like 1200 degrees or something for like a minute or two, which also wipes out more plant and animal life. And then we have the aftershock of that creating again, the ice age, because then everything's like lava, but then that goes away. The clouds get blotted out because the atmosphere is like replaced itself or whatever. And then we got 
ash and that creates an ice age. A lot of life and stuff doesn't live. And then I'm sorry, also side note, I know dinosaurs, not realistic in what I'm about to say. Bear with me. Any species that survived this, any. Lottery ticket. <laughs> they just need one. Like that's <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna link the video down below because it's very educational. It pureed my brain, but like it was good information and it's done in a very interesting way. They cover a lot of information like the chain reaction of what happens after the asteroid hit Earth because I didn't logically, I, I don't know why I never even considered the fact that like, oh, it didn't wipe out everything immediately. Like it wiped out obviously by like the end of the chain reaction of the asteroid hitting it like 75% of life on earth is wiped out. Like I didn't even think about the last like 35%. Like I didn't even consider that 75, 35. Is that, a that is 110% of life on earth. Um, it's 75 and then the remaining 25%, not 35. I told you I'm bad at math. <laughs> Send a mathematician with me to space. <laughs> Maybe, maybe they don't like me and it's like an enemies to lovers story and then we can sell the movie rights when we land. <laughs> oh my God, I am not sleeping enough, clearly. Would I sleep worse or better in space? Genuine question. If I have any astronauts watching this, please let me know. Do you sleep better or worse when you are on the space station? Like, let me know. I'm genuinely curious because I do not sleep through the night and if going to space is what it takes for me to become a more solid sleeper, I will do it. Also this video, the day the dinosaurs died minute by minute, told me something that like shook me to my core and like actually bothered me. I know this whole video is just me being shook to my core and like pureeing my brain, but like it told me, I didn't know this, the unnamed asteroid, we never, we never named the asteroid that wiped out dinosaurs, that paved the way for humanity, that paved the way for humankind. We didn't name the asteroid. It's been millions of years. That, that seems mean to me, you know? Like that doesn't seem humane. This asteroid, chonky big boy. We need to name the asteroid. We name hurricanes, but we can't name the asteroid that like created life as we know it. That seems mean. I, you know what? I don't trust them. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna name the asteroid, one second. Why did I just think of brand names like immediately? <laughs> I just immediately started listing off brand names like, oh, these could work. No. Ooh, Gladiator. We're naming the asteroid Gladiator. I've decided this is not a Gladiator. This is just a random night that I built, but I've decided we're gonna name the asteroid Gladiator. Gladiator the asteroid, um, because the Gladiator wiped out 75% of life on Earth as we knew it, um, or as they knew it. We didn't know it yet, but eventually we would know it. Anyway, Gladiator the asteroid. I'm gonna have artwork commission of Gladiator. I'm gonna put it in the background of this, of this channel. That's what I'm gonna do, I've decided, um, because I will honor Gladiator's memory and everything that it gave us. You know what? Because scientific community can't appreciate the asteroid, can't appreciate Gladiator, but you know what? I, I can, I will. I will do it enough for everyone. I will appreciate Gladiator. Anyway, that's probably gonna be it for this video. Is it just me being chaotic and spiraling? Yes. But you know what, I'm glad I could, you know, hopefully share this with you. I'm glad I could explain to you about uh, the day the dinosaurs died because again, Great video, highly recommend it. I'm gonna link it down below. This video also reestablishes that there's a very high probability that like bits of asteroids were like shot out into space and some of them could have in fact landed on the moon. So this is like a widely accepted or like mostly accepted probable fact that bits of debris from Earth, from the asteroid that wiped out dinosaurs most likely landed on the moon. Okay, like high probability of that. So. Why are we not having a moon mission where we go and find asteroids? I will do it. I tried going to space so you don't have to. I tried to find space dinosaur debris so you don't have to. I will do that. I will do that. Um, I can't afford, I don't think I can do like a, a tax write-off of like a, a moon mission. I'll have to ask my accountant if I'm, <laughs> what sponsorship wants to send me to the moon? <laughs> anyway. 
that's gonna be it. Feel free to check out anything that I linked down below. Like I said, uh, I love learning. I love science. I love theorizing stuff, even though I know none of it's ever gonna be real because I'm annoying and uh, lack the focus and drive to achieve any type of scientific feat on my own. Do you like dinosaur on the moon idea? Do you like any of my apparent film ideas that I have drafted in this video for dinosaur bits on the moon? Ghost dinosaurs on the moon? I think we can make that happen. Comment down below if you know anyone in Hollywood who will finance my film comment down below. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon and letting me continue to make content where I spiral for an unforeseeable amount of time. If you'd also like to support me on Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. More than anything, I just wanna know like how the preservation, like how does decay happen on the moon? Logically, how does it happen? How does decay happen in space? Okay, how does it happen? Okay, does it happen? Is it not like is would there just be like a stump of a dinosaur potentially just chilling under some moon rock, just over just covered in dust? Like like could we get Jurassic Park from finding something on the moon? Like could could we do that? Thank you, Ali, Alan, Alex, Braden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crafts, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dardo, and Dolly, Evan, Feckless, Hopeless, Hollow, Jeff, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lex, Lisa, Louise, Monga, Matt, Math, O, Matthew, S, Me, Lord, the Red, Michael, Michael, J, Nathaniel, Pat, Pilot, Robert, Robert, Ross, Sam, Simon, Stephen, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams. And